So Myron Roll was once the number one ranked high school football player in the country. He played at Florida State and then the NFL, but now he's a doctor at Mass General in Boston on the front lines of the coronavirus fight. And Dr. Myron Roll joins me now. Doctor, it's an honor to speak with you. Thank you so much for the work you're doing. And your brother tells us you've worked nine straight days and you have a 24 hour shift tomorrow. How are you holding up? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's very tiring for sure, uh, mentally exhausting, but just trying to do the best I can to stay focused. I look at every patient that I see and that my colleagues see um, with the utmost respect and trying to be as sharp and efficient in my thinking and uh, my creative thinking and my critical thinking as possible because they expect that of us. So just trying to stay disciplined, focused throughout this whole pandemic and do the best I can for sure. We stalk you on Instagram uh, and we noticed you posted this. You said, we're still in it and I believe that we will win. Hopefully we can throw this up on the screen so people can see it. Uh, we are still in it and I believe that we will win the team the team, the team. Who is the team you're talking about here? Well, the team is all of us, honestly. You know, I come from a sporting background, as you know. Uh, I've been playing football since I was six, and football taught me a lot about teamwork, getting along with people who you may not have found yourself in the same circle with normally. Uh, they may come from different backgrounds, have different interests. But all together right now, from medical professionals in our hospital at Mass General, where we as neurosurgeons are sort of redeploying and repurposing ourselves to help in this COVID-19 fight. So everyone out in the street uh, and the normal citizenry who have to adhere to those lifestyle behavior modifications to help us get over this curve, we all need to join together, have this collective goal of getting our country and our world back to the sense of normalcy. That's the team I'm talking about. It's the biggest team that any of us would be a part of, and it's something that I'm proud to be a part of for sure. Look, it makes me feel better uh, as I'm at home most of the day to know that you're on my team and in some ways leading that team in Mass General. So thank you very much for the work you're doing. I was reading Sally Jenkins' profile of you in the Washington Post, and she noted that you approached this in, in similar ways as you did to a football game, which is to say you want to go out on that field every day and beat the spit out of your opponent. In this case, the opponent is coronavirus. That's right. You know, in football, we had to prepare, right? You had to watch film. You had to make sure that you knew the personnel, the groupings, the kind of plays that teams were going to do, the tendencies that they had. And now we have to prepare for what COVID-19 has for us. Is there an antibody coming? Is there a vaccine coming? Who does it affect the most? What subset of the population? Which demographic has hit the hardest? How do we adjust as providers? How do we adjust and keep ourselves protected with our protective equipment? How do we mitigate pressure and how do we sort of work through those pressures by staying true to our fundamentals? The things that football taught me on the field and practice and games, the weight room, uh, the locker room is now translating into medicine and particularly this very important situation that we have going now. So um, I'm fortunate that I had that experience. I'm trying to use it every single day because it keeps me motivated, keeps me driving forward uh, and it's helped me so far. What are you seeing in Mass General every day? What are you seeing in the hospital? So our hospital has transformed, certainly. I mean, you walk in, everyone has to wear a protective mask, there's hand sanitizers everywhere. Our neurosurgical floor has been turned to a COVID-19 only floor. Our outpatient neurosurgical clinic is now all done virtually where we call our patients, tell them about their CT scans, their MRIs, when we have to reschedule their elective cases. Uh, there's a surgery clinic, a hospital within a hospital where me and a few of my colleagues have volunteered our services to help triage some of these COVID-19 patients. Our operating rooms are slower now. Uh, now only emergent or urgent cases are pretty much going. So it's a total adaptation, a total you know, proactive response by our hospital administration to try to make sure that we're fit and we're ready uh, for the influx of patients that are not only coming this week, but certainly will surge in the next weeks or two here in Boston. So you have such a unique view of this being on the front lines, and you also have some insight into professional sports. You know, there's a discussion going on right now across the country about when to reopen, how to reopen. How would you feel about football reopening in August, having training camp in August? Or how would you feel if you were a baseball player playing as soon as May, which they're talking about? Yeah, certainly. I realize how, uh, you know, how important football and other sports are to not only to fans and, and our local economy, but to the players itself. You know, I when I was younger, I had a short window, a transient time where I could really show my athletic ability and do the best I can. And for a lot of these players, they feel the same way. But I think that to think that sports may happen in a month or two months is rather ambitious at this point. I think we need to see trends continuously fall 
I think we need to allow stats and our epidemiologists to really look at uh, where the morbidity and mortality is going with this infectious virus. And then also look at hospitals, like our hospital, for instance, as a barometer for what's happening. Are we having less hospitalizations? Are we using less oxygen and ventilator support? Are we turning back those neurosurgical floors and other floors that have transformed into COVID-19 floors? Are we turning them back into their originally purpose floors? Uh, are we not having surge clinics anymore? Are we seeing these things kind of go down in some of these major hotspots? And when we do, I think at that point, we may consider returning to a sense of normalcy. But right now, I think we all need to be mm -hmm. comfortable just being a little bit uncomfortable, be patient, mm -hmm. and allow this curve to continue to flatten and allow these brilliant intellectual people on the front lines the opportunity to figure this all out. Like you, the brilliant people on the front lines like you. And I just want to end on you for a second, if I can, because people who don't know your story is extraordinary. Um, you were a phenomenal college football player and also a Rhodes Scholar. And in many ways, you chose to be where you are right now. You, you, you were doing both for some time, but ultimately you became a full-time neurosurgeon, which is what you are. And in this battle now, do you feel now that you are exactly where you belong? That's a great question. I, I, I do, actually. You know, we came from the Bahamas and I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, my parents placed some really important academic role models in front of my face, like Kofi Annan and Nelson Mandela, Paul Robeson and Ben Carson. I read his book, Gifted Hands, when I was younger, and he sparked the idea of neurosurgery in my head. And I kept this academic and athletic parallel road going until football was done, got all the athletic ability out of my body, jumped over into academics and into medicine, and now I think I'm perfectly positioned to, to help in this fight. I, I love the central nervous system. I love the brain and spine. I love helping vulnerable people. And I ultimately wanted to have another impact in my life when my second chapter started. Once football was done and the crowds were done and the cheering was gone, no more touchdowns or tackles to be made, I wanted to still be able to um, have influence mm -hmm. uh, in, in the community. And uh, through, I think that's... Well, anyone who says, I love the central nervous system is in fact exactly where he belongs to be as a neurosurgeon at Mass General. My own role, Dr. Roll, thank you very much for being with us and thank you so much for the work you're doing. Thank you for having me, appreciate it.